Um, so yeah, my name's Oli. I work for Andy's Man Club. We are a men's mental health and suicide prevention charity. Um, we run peer-to-peer -peer support groups across the UK for any man to attend, um, any man over the age of 18, uh, who might be going through a storm, a struggle, who might be struggling with the mental health or, or just the, the day to day life. Um, we offer a safe place for guys to come and talk and get to off the chest in a secure and non judgmental environment and just communicate with other guys who might be going through similar things or at least are going through issues that might make them feel the same way or um, have an empathy towards how they're feeling. Andy's Man Club was founded back in 2016. Um, it was founded on the back of a death um, of a young man named Andy Roberts, who unfortunately took his own life at the very young age of 23 years old. Um, his brother-in-law, Luke Ambler, and his mum, Elaine Roberts, um, decided they wanted to set up something to prevent other families going through the, the tragedy that they went through themselves. Um, and also with the thought in mind that if Andy had had somewhere where he could have gone to talk about his issues, that he might still be here today. Um, so roll on sort of five and a half years later, We've now got 76 groups nationwide um, and all the groups run at the same time on a Monday evening. And last night we had um, 1,512 men across the UK in attendance at our groups with I think um, 200 and I think it's about 260 of those guys were guys that have attended for the first time. So their first session with Andy's Man Club. Um, the premise of the clubs and how we run is very simple. Um, it's there to give guys an open forum to talk about anything that might be bothering them. Um, we're, there, there are a couple of things that we don't talk about, politics, religion, medication, for obvious reasons. Some of those are very divisive subjects and uh, others we're, we're not professionals um, and we don't offer professional advice. What we do do is bring guys together, uh, bring guys together who might be going through similar issues. Um, some of our groups have got up to 40 lads uh, that are all sat around. Together we split them up in smaller groups and, and make sure that everybody's uh, maintaining keeping up to regulations and things like that. Um, but within those groups, there is a wealth of life experience. Um, guys from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds, all different ethnic ethnicities, um, orientations, guys that are currently homeless to guys that are you know, CEOs of multinational corporations. But when you walk through the doors of an Andy's Man Club, everybody's equal. There's no hierarchy. Um, the groups are run by volunteers, um, our facilitators, and those facilitators are all guys who have attended Andy's Man Club for their own needs, gone a little bit further on their own journey, and now open the doors to other guys coming through. Um, I myself was in that position. Um, I was at the first ever Andy's Man Club session that was held here in Halifax back in 2016 as somebody who needed to support myself. Um, I went on from that first session just talking about things that I'd never spoken about, uh, things that I'd been bottling up and sort of carrying on my day-to-day -day life as if everything was normal. Um, and I knew at the end of that very first session the um, importance of, of what we had there and the, the power of speaking and being open and having a platform on which to do so. Um, from there, I went to volunteer um, at our flagship group here at Halifax, and I ran that group for about four years as a volunteer whilst working full-time elsewhere. And then in September 2020, I took on full-time employment with Andy's Man Club. So now I oversee the running of about a quarter of our groups nationwide. Um, sort of anything south of the M62, um, east of the M1, and all along the south coast as well. So it's quite a large patch to, to look after. Um, and my role involves looking after the volunteers that we've got, um, setting up new groups in new communities, and raising awareness about the work that we're doing by going into different companies, delivering presentations around the importance of talking, the stigmas around men's mental health, uh, and what we can do to break down those boundaries and, and get guys to open up um, and talk about those feelings and emotions that they might not talk about anywhere else. Um, to go back to some of the talking points on there, um, obviously I've, I've got the motivation behind setting up Andy's Man Club. Luke Ambler um, had worked in mental health for a long time, uh, delivering um, talks as a motivational speaker, as well as mental health workshops for, for both children and adults. Um, so when Andy took his own life, it came as a massive shock to him. Um, as somebody who worked in mental health, that he didn't reach out and speak. Um, so they had the, the motivation was obviously to make Andy's name live on, um, provide a safe space for, for guys so that other families didn't go through the tragedy that they went through themselves, but also with, uh, with an ongoing passion for mental health there as well. Um, the services that were around at the time are very similar to the services that we have now. 
And I don't think that there's a necessarily a lack of services. It's the access um, to, to services. I know that there's quite a long wait time for, for mental health provisions in this country. Um, and what we offer is sort of an in-between. We don't offer professional support. There are guys that come to our clubs that need additional support. And we would point those guys in the right direction of that support. But what we do offer is um, a, a step in between where guys can come down um, and talk in an informal environment. There's no counsellors, there's no psychologists, there's no clipboards, there's nothing like that. Um, the guys are all just there of their own will, um, free to attend, and, and they run on a regular basis. They run every week across the country. So there's no waiting list, there's no booking on, there's no referrals or anything like that. Guys can literally just show up on a Monday night um, and, and speak to like-minded individuals who um, will welcome them with empathy um, because they've all been that one man who's walked through the door that first time themselves and they know that the um, anxiety that comes with that, um, the nerves um, and the, uh, the potential turmoil um, of, of getting through that threshold for the first time. Um, part of my role is supporting our volunteers. We've currently got um, about 420 volunteers nationwide. Um, as I said, those guys are all guys who have been on their own mental health journey and now help us run the clubs um, on a ground level. We're based in Halifax. That's where our head office is and where um, most of our staff are based. We've got one member of staff who works remotely up in Scotland. Um, we've recently been registered as a charity up in Scotland as well. Um, so for us, the work that the volunteers put in on a, on a weekly basis is fundamental. We wouldn't be able to, to get around all of 72 of those groups um, with the base of staff that we've got. Um, and we rely on those guys to, to sort of hold the fort down, if you like, and make sure those doors are open on a Monday evening. Um, in terms of growth, um, Andy's Man Club has grown exponentially over the last 18 months. When we came out of lockdown in September 2020, we had 28 groups, which had taken four years to build. Um, by the end of this month, we'll have had we'll have seventy six groups across the UK. So we've um, nearly tripled that in the last eighteen months, um, due to the investment that we've got in staff. Um, the first couple of years of our operation, we were completely volunteer run. Um, Luke himself put in a lot of hours and a lot of miles, um, at no expense to the organisation, um, to make sure that this was a success. And in it wasn't until. Uh, March 2018 that we took on our first paid member of staff. So from that point then, um, sort of 18 months later, we had 28 clubs. And now another 18 months later, we're, we're knocking on the door of 100 clubs um, with, you know, coming up to 2,000 men across the UK, getting that support on a weekly basis. We've got another 15 groups in the pipeline to be opened before the end of March. Um, and that number's only going to carry on growing. In terms of government policies that could help, um, I think normalising the conversations around mental health is a massive step in the right direction. Um, we, One of our primary focuses is reducing the stigma around men's mental health and telling the stories of the guys that attend in hope that other guys can see that and hear that and have the courage to come forward and talk about their own journeys because Everybody suffers with mental health in one way or another, whether it's just stress, whether it's um, anxiety, depression, whatever level it might be. Um, but the stigmas around mental health, and particularly mental health in men, uh, still very much prevalent in society today, um, to the point where men are not willing to come forward and admit that they've got an issue, um, to the point where it's too late and they've reached some sort of crisis point in their life. Now, we aim to be that step in between, as I mentioned before, um, give men somewhere to talk before they get to the crisis point. Um, as men, we're very unlikely to go to the doctors um, unless something's falling off. So to have somewhere that's a little bit less formal for the guys to go, um, to have those conversations in a, in a normal environment is, is fundamental to, uh, to move it forward as a society, I, I believe. Um, as we know, suicide is the biggest killer of men under the age of 50 in the UK and three quarters of all suicides in the UK are men, and those statistics speak for themselves. We need to do more to address these issues. Um, I think making council spaces um, available for, for us to use would be a brilliant um, starting point. We have volunteers ready to go across the United Kingdom, um, but we are looking for spaces to host those meetings. Um, I've got a cohort of 
guys across London that are wanting to get involved in Andy's Man Club, but we're struggling to find venues across London to, to give those guys the opportunity to open these clubs. Um, I have a club opening in Barnet, which is on the radar for about March, um, using a community centre down there and, and local guys to run that group as well. That'll be our first group in London. But I believe once we have a club within the boroughs of London, um, obviously due to the ease of transport and things like that, um, that group will be very well attended. Um, and we'll have guys then from the, across the whole of London that are wanting to get clubs set up in their local boroughs. At the moment, we've got guys travelling from central London to our groups in Essex, um, Chelmsford and South End, which, as you can imagine, is, is quite a commute to get some support on Monday evening um, to get back home again. So it's a massive piece of work that we've been doing around that area at the moment. Um, and hopefully, you know, within um, within the next 12 months, we'll have a, a number of clubs all across London as well. Um, in terms of a strategy around men's mental health, it's something that we've been involved in in the past. Um, back in 2016, we met with the Minister for Health at that point, and Andy's Man Club was mentioned, I believe, three times in the newly developed mental health strategy at that time. Um, however, it is something that we're willing to engage in um, at any point in time to give you know our, our opinion on, on what can be done, what needs to be done, um, and any other sort of reference points that you guys need.